Hello, and welcome to the video Printing W2 Forms on a Windows PC. This video will cover the setup of CDN Plus for printing W2 Forms, as well as the process for printing these forms in the Atrix Forms Viewer. The first section of CDN Plus we want to look at will be Payer Records. Go to the menus, select Program, Payroll, Payer Records. This opens the Payer Records window. In the upper part of the window, called the results list, you see that we have no items listed. So we go over to the left-hand sidebar and click All under Show. Now we see that we have one payer record named First Community Church. We want to be able to verify this information that is detailed in the bottom portion of the window. There are three different sections we'll look at. The first section above the red line has two fields, one a description field and the other one a federal ID number. The next is the company and contact information and finally on the right side it's the state's data. The description field above the red line is a very important field. This field is used throughout the CDM Plus payroll module. So you want to make sure you have an identifiable description name, especially if you use more than one payer record. The other field is the federal ID number. This field is a requirement for federal forms, so you must ensure that you have the correct number entered in this field. Below the description field, you have company and contact information. This section contains the organization information required for printing your W-2 forms. You want to make sure that you've entered this information correctly and thoroughly. All the fields with an asterisk must be filled in. Even though you have an opportunity to change this information within the Atrix Forms Viewer, please be aware that those changes will not be reflected back into CDM Plus. So it's best that you get this information correct before you print your W-2 forms. Otherwise, you'll have to come back in here after printing your W-2s and update this information separately. Right below the company and contact information is the 941 depositor frequency. If you need Schedule B forms, then you would need Select Semi-Weekly. In our case, we don't need semi-weekly forms, so we'll leave it set to monthly. The final area we'll look at is under the state. Here is where you're going to enter your state information. You need to ensure that you select the state and that you properly enter your state tax ID number. The next section of CDM Plus that we want to look at is going to be deduction setup. So we go to payroll, deduction setup records. This opens the deduction setup records window. We don't have any information in the results list, so we click on all. And there are two items that we want to highlight in this review. The first is a 403B contribution, and the second are local taxes. So let's first take a look at the 403B contribution. What we want to review is the W-2 field. Here we want to ensure that we have the proper box designation selected. In this case, we have box 12, code BB. If you click on Change and click on the dropdown, you'll see a large number of items that you can select from. You need to ensure that you're selecting the proper one. In our case, it is code BB. And once you have that selected, click Save. The next deduction that we want to look at is a local tax. In our case, it would be Clark County tax. With this tax deduction, we want to ensure that the tax form is selected, the correct account number is entered, and the proper local type is selected. So if we look at these again, you see under local withholding, we have different options. In our case, we want local withholding. And under the local type, we have county income selected, and there are other ones to select, but in our case, it's county income. With those selected, you click and save your work. The final section of CDM Plus is employee records. So we go to payroll, employee records. This used to be named employee information prior to CDM Plus 11. This brings up the employee records window. There are two areas we want to look in this window, the setup and pay items. Let's first ensure that we can select an employee. So we have Dean Patterson selected and we'll go under the setup tab. Here we want to look at 
the W-2 information box. If an employee is contributing to a retirement plan, you want to ensure that you have a check in the retirement plan checkbox. If an employee also has elected to have his W-2s filed electronically only, then this box must be checked. This is a voluntary option, and so you would have to have the approval of the employee to only file electronically. The next section is under pay items. And here we want to look at the housing allowance setup. For housing allowance, the W-2 line should have W-2 box 14 other with the description of housing. You'll want to go through all of your pastors that you have uh, set up to have a housing allowance and ensure that this information is set up properly and the description is consistent. With this review complete, now you're ready to begin printing your W-2 forms. To print our W-2s, we need to go to reports, payroll reports, payroll tax forms. This brings up the payroll tax forms window. Here, there are three sections that we need to concern ourselves with. The upper section is the payer section. Here, we want to ensure that we have the proper payer selected here. And to the right of that, we have the uh, state and federal drop down. And here we are going to select federal because we're going to be printing our federal W-2s. If we were going to printing state forms, we would select the state. With the federal selected, now we want to uh, select the proper form and we want the 2019 W-2. And so we select that and we enter the year under the date section. With all of that filled out, we then click on show form. CDM Plus is exporting information and Atrix is taking that information and importing it into their data file and has brought up the W-2 setup wizard. So in the beginning of this process, you have the option of doing a test drive or just starting to process your W-2s. The test drive, you can do it for the first 25 employees only, or you can do all of your employees. In our case, we're just going to start processing our W-2s. So we select the, the last item and click on the next button. The first thing you need to verify in this process is your company EIN number. Here, you've already looked at this number in the payer records, but you want to ensure that this information is still correct. And when you're confident, move forward. If you're using multiple data files, this is the window where you would need to set this. Since we're only using a single payroll data file, we would click no. However, if you are using more than one, you cl click yes and then move forward. Here is a listing of all of your company information from your payer record window. You want to go through this information another time. Just be warned that if you make any changes here, these changes will not be reflected back in the CDM Plus. You would need to go back into your payer record and update that information. If all the information is correct, click Next. Now this is asking you what type of filer are you? Well, we are going to be filing for our employer, so we would select the first one. But if you're a paid tax preparer and you're filing for another company, you would select the second. And our, again, our will will select the first one. And this brings up your state and local tax items. We can see that there is something wrong with the state withholding because it has a red uh, highlight to it. So we'll select this item and then click on edit. And we see that this has this is missing one digit. So when we enter in the proper digit, we click OK, and now the red highlight is gone and we can move forward. Here in the data verification window, there are two areas that we want to look at specifically. First one is, do you have any employees who are exempt from any part of Medicare or Social Security taxes? In our case, our pastors are, so we click on yes. And since we do have employees who are members of the clergy, we're going to say yes here. These are important because if you do not have these set up correctly, you will not be able to continue without correcting in the verification grid when it gets to the steps where it's looking at the FICA Medicare taxes. So with these two items set to yes, we click on next. This is asking if we have employees who are tribal council members. We don't, so we click next. 
Now we need to set up our W3 information. The kind of payer we are is a 941, and we are a 501c non-government employer. Those two things selected, we move forward. And now Atrix is going to take that information along with the information that was exported from CDM Plus, and it's going to put it into a verification grid. As you can see down in our taskbar, the preparers come up, and now we have this window that's a grid, and it has two panes within it, and it has a bar going down the center. If we move, we can move that bar to the right or left in order to widen uh, a particular pane. We can also move horizontally in those panes with the horizontal scroll bars at the bottom of each pane. At the top of the window on the right side, we can get some help information. On the left side, you can go back to your company setup, that wizard we just went through. You also have buttons for next and previous so that you can move through this uh, prepare window. And finally, you can see what step you're on. So we're going to click on the next button. And this is verifying employee information. Now we see that we have come to what Atrix calls as a fatal error. It's fatal because we cannot continue forward. We have to go back and correct it. So once we get in here and we type in the correct value, we can click on next. And we don't see any problems with this section, so we click on next. Again, no problems, we'll click on next. And now we have what is considered a non-fatal error. And this is what I was talking about in the company setup where you needed to ensure that you had selected yes for those employees that are exempt from FICA and Medicare. Since we have set that up properly, we can continue without correcting because the, uh, the individuals that are being called out here are pastors and they should not have any social security wages. Click on continue without correcting and click on next. And we click on the next and verify additional information. And now we're in the final step. And this is a new step within Atrix. What they're doing at this step is they're going to give you a listing of all of the non-fatal errors that you received. And it gives you one more time if you need to go back and correct them. Again, these are for the three individuals that are pastors. So we're okay here and we click continue without correcting. And now we're ready to move into the process of actually printing our forms. The first thing we need to do to do so is we need to select how we want to do it. We have either using Atrix's complete W2 e-filing service, or we can print them ourselves. In our case, we're going to go through the process of printing them ourselves. So we go other options and then we select print and we want to print the W2 and W3 and the W2 states. When you select the print employee W2s, e-filing is also selected. And when these two are selected, you'll notice that these two items down here are called record copies. Since we're not going to be e-filing, we're going to uncheck these. And as you see, these will go from record copies to official copies. So now you'll be able to print all of your official copies of your W2 and W3s. And let's move forward. If you have more than one state here listed, you want to make sure that you have all the states selected. In our case, we only have Kentucky. We have it checked, and so we can move forward. This is a review of all of the forms that are going to be printed listed in this box. If you click on this button, it will not print your forms. If you want to print your W-2 forms, you need to click on the next button. Now the Atrix Forms Viewer is opening. The first forms that we're going to print are the Kentucky W-2s. Let's just take a little bit of time and familiarize ourselves with this window. The upper part of the window, you can see in the upper left, you see the number of pages that are associated with this form. It's more than just this one page. If I click on the green arrow to the right, now we'll go through and we can look at each of the forms and verify the information on each one. 
We can also go backwards. In this case, this has four employees per page. When we're okay with this information, we can click print final. If you're going to use perforated paper, you can now uh, insert that into your printer, click OK, and then when you're ready to print, click OK. In this video, I'm not going to be printing anything, but I'll just click Cancel. Once the item is printed, we can click on Next Step, and it's going to open the Employee W-2 records. Here we see that we have 14 pages. That's because we have four W-2s per page. Therefore, you have one employee per page. And so we know that we're going to be printing the correct number since we have 14 employees. Once again, we click print final, insert the paper if we need to, click OK, click OK to print, and then click next step. The next report is a W-2 employer report. Here it's four pages long, and we verify that information. And we don't have to always click print final. If you accidentally click next step, you will have an option to print these reports. So again, you can insert that, click OK, and the print window comes up. Click OK to print. And that will then automatically move you to the next report, which is your federal W-2. Here, these are two employees per page. We have seven pages, that's correct. And we can click next step and ask if we want to print this, and we say yes. Now this says it doesn't have to be printed on perforated paper, so you can use plain paper, click OK, and then click OK to print. Now we're to the federal W-3. We look at this information, verify everything. If everything's good, click print final, and print the report by clicking OK. With the report printed, click next step, and you go to your Kentucky K-5 report. Now we see that there's a red box in this report. This is like a fatal error in the prepare. We cannot move forward until we do something with this. So we're going to click OK, and we need to enter zero. So we put in zeros here, it turns into blue, and let's go and click on next step. It's going to ask, do we want to go back and double check? No, we feel okay with this. Click agree. And it comes up for us to print. Click okay and print your report. And now we get to the final report, which is the W-2 notice. And we click on print final. And then next step. Final window that pops up is the history file options window. This is a window that we would get if we clicked on the history button on the payroll forms window. So in order to save the work that we've done, we click on close and that saves our information. Now, if we wanted to, we can go and click on the history button and you can see that we can select W2, W3 and click on edit and that will open the W2 history window. If you have not printed or e-filed any of your forms, you could always click start over and begin the process all over again. If you have printed and mailed those forms out already, then you would have to use the other options. So that completes this video. If during the process of printing your W-2s you have any questions, you can always call support at one 800 633 9581. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.